What's up, all Power Ask Crew? Today's video we're doing ta da! Ignition lock cylinder. This is where you stick the key in, you turn it to start your rig. Well, years ago, the little wings on the side that you used to put your fingers against to turn it, they broke off a long time ago. But here recently, the tumblers inside started falling apart and I couldn't even start my rig. So, yeah, I had to do some uh, ingenuity to get my thing to start to get to and from work for a couple of days so I got the new part in place. So, anyway, today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to change it out. Let's go. So, the first thing we need to do, take your horn button or your Jeep cap there. Just give it an easy pull. And it snaps right off. Now we got that. See that nut right there? 21 millimeter. Take it off. One, two, three Phillips head screws. Take them out. Don't lose them now. Now you see here you got that bottom plate underneath this cup right here. Just keep them in line like that and you should be good to go. Just got them all stacked up right there. So keep track of them. Now I've got a bolt puller set here that I've had for like forever. I really haven't even used it as you can tell. Maybe a couple of bolts have been used. But if you don't have one of these it's okay. Go down to your local auto parts store and say hey I, I need a steering wheel puller. And they'll hook you up with the right stuff. So I'm going to find which bolts I need and I'll be right back. Once you figure out what bolts you need, then you're going to get out this, these contract. You know, I have no idea. And once you get the bolts you need, you're going to get the uh, piece right here that presses it out. But when it comes, it's going to be like this right here. Nothing in the center of it. And this particular kit here comes with one, two, three different tip adapters. What you want to do is size it up to where it doesn't put any pressure upon the threads as you're pressing. Say for instance this one right here, you think, huh, oh, that's flat. Well, no, not necessarily. It's kind of uh, concave there a bit. So my thoughts is, if you use that and you're pressing, it may push on the edge of those threads right there. And next thing you know, when you go put the thing back together, you're going to have a hard time putting the nut on. Not good. This one right here will work. Tidbit overkill. This one right here, got the little sharp point on it, as it does that one. But like I say, it's just large overkill. And... That will fit right in that center divot right there and give us what we need. You take your threaded rod, screw it into the plate. Now some of these plates, depending on what type of kit you get, one side is going to be kind of uh, dome shaped, one side will be flat. Obviously you need the flat side against your bolts when you go up against this. Now when you go into the auto parts store that you ask for a steering wheel puller, more than likely what you're going to get is an H shaped bracket. Meaning, stay, stay, stay. It'll have like this and this, but it'll be open-ended, but you won't have none of this right here. Because this right here is a universal puller for you know, many different things to pull, obviously. But your standard steering wheel puller will have open ends here and here, and just be an H shape. So, let's go ahead and get a bolt. You gotta put it in here, and get this thing off there so we get this done. And once you get your threads started up inside there, run them in probably at least a good quarter inch, at least. So you got good engagement into the steering wheel. Then you'll take that center cone right there, put it in the middle of that divot in the shaft right here, and turn this until this plate bottoms out on the bolts. And as you can see, it's pretty solid right now, so I can get me a range right here or a socket to fit that, and we'll crank it back. Let's see. Yep, bigger socket. Be right back. Okay, I've got a 14 millimeter socket on it, and now we just slowly start applying pressure. Don't get carried away. Little by little. And there she goes. She's off. Ta da! Wasn't that so easy? And like I said, don't get start manhandling it or he man it, whatever term you want to use. Slow and easy, because you got to disengage the steering wheel hub from those splines right there. So you just want to ease it off there. So the tool we're going to use to press that plate in to hold it back while we get that spring has different sizes, 91613 or M415 right here. So we're going to take this contraption off right here, and we're going to figure out which side we need. It's metric. So the end I'm using is an M4. 1.5 so what we do is then we take this turn it back around this way put it over the end of the shaft here and slide that pin back in get in 
dinner. Darn young. So it's got a little divot ball right there on the end though, so it actually just presses in. Now that we figured out, we're going to use the M14.5 set on here like this. And take this, screw that on there. And I hear the comments. I hear the comments. You don't need that tool. All right, so here's what you would do if you didn't use the tool. You know, you just get that there so it just kind of kind of loose. If you wasn't going to use the tool, what you would have to do is press that center plate in. And this guy's a pretty, it's pretty stout. You got to press that center plate like that. And then, all at the same time, holding that center plate in, wedge out that ring. Can it be done? Absolutely, because I've done it several times. But is it kind of cumbersome and a pain in the tail? Yeah, it can be. So, get this tool aligned here. We're going to take a little wing nut, start cranking down a little bit. And when I get the ring exposed, which it is now, I'm going to show you guys how you need to position this. Okay. See the H of the tool here. Try to position your steering wheel so that you've got the gap in that ring right there. I hope the camera's picking it up. Let's see the viewfinder. Let's zoom in on it. Okay, see that snap ring right there? See that gap? You want that gap to top or to where you can get to it the easiest possible. Because you're going to get you a couple flat screwdrivers, or if you got a pick, that'd be great as well. Get in behind that snap ring. You want to wedge it upward, then off. So let's see how cooperative it's going to be. Let's see if like it's been for the past couple weeks. Well, it's not going to be cooperative. But well, we'll find out. The little old girl, my old YJ, she's been cranky lately. Okay, so I'm going to try to turn this a little bit so you guys can get a little bit of a view of what's going on here. So you get the small screwdriver. If you can get under that snap ring. Get it lifted up. Take a bigger one. Get in behind it. Let me show you. See how I've got the bigger, bigger screwdriver behind it holding the snap ring from snapping back down inside that groove. And once you get it like that. I really hope that last take took because me and this new camera don't get along very well. But get in behind that holding it, screwdriver, get in behind that snap ring on the, let me switch hands, hold it here and take and walk that ring out of that groove. There she goes. But I don't want to turn it, don't move your screwdriver just yet because sometimes it can miraculously, as they say, pop right back in place and you don't want that. So now we got it up out of that groove. Now I'm just going to let it sit there so you guys can see what's up. See that right there? We got that snap ring out of that groove now. So we can take this tool off. So once you get that snap ring pulled out a little bit, you, then you can take your plate. Loosen your wing nut here will allow that plate to come back this way. And at one point, <clears throat> it gets loose. Then you unscrew it. And set the tool to the side for the moment. Now, most of the time, you can take this flat plate, the plate that you're taking out here, and it'll walk that ring off sometimes. Depends on how much texture you've got in this shaft right here. But it's wanting to be cantankerous, so I'm just going to take my screwdriver, get in behind it, a little gentle twist, and I'm going to stab my hand. A little gentle twist, and it'll walk right off there that way. Then we get to that, and we're here. There we go. Then we take this, shimmy it off, and there you go. Sit down here with my other parts. And gently take that off, because you got this little centerpiece right here. 
when you re-push that, it's making contact inside there for this ring. So be sure you don't get the pots falling out. All right, so now here's what we got going on. You gotta need your Phillips head screwdriver. Let me, my viewfinder flips, I need to see what I'm doing here. We're gonna have a screw right back here, one right there, and one right there. Now I've got, I've got one of these right here, a new one to change out. It's not gonna be today because this wire goes all the way down through the steering column and I'm just not that froggy right now. But I need to get this right here fixed, which is the subject for the day. Now that we've got this stuff out of the way, we got three Phillips head screws to take care of. One, two, and three, way back down inside that hole. Now this one here is all, wait a minute, it's all covered up. I can't get to that one. Sure you can. Right turn, right there, wide open. So flip this up, make a right turn, get to that screw, then take that one out and take that one out, and we'll work that piece out of there. Drop it a cup holder in my console. This one. Now once you get this loose, your turn signal stock over here, it's going to get all floppy on you. And it's connected back up inside there. So be careful with that because it goes back inside a ball up inside there. It's got, uh, so I can show you guys this. Yucky. You can look at the end of that right there. See that little ball? Whenever you go to put it back in, which I'll show you that obviously here in a moment, Leave your screw out, and there's a slot right down inside there. You'll take it, this ball, set it right down inside that slot right there, and it'll guide right in. Then you'll take this, you move your arm over here up into place, then it'll allow you to put the screw in. So just be mindful of that slot and that ball working in with each other. Now you think, okay, I'm ready to take that piece out. Eh, not quite. You got one more screw right here. I kept turning on my hazards. <laughs> so, let's set that in there because that's got its own screw that goes up inside there. Then we can get this out. Really? Okay, anyway. Oh, wait a minute. There's one more screw right here. My bad. Right there. Right there with that arm connected over top of it. There's one right there. Then see how lucky we get pulling the switch out because oftentimes that wire is running down through the column right here. You may have to get underneath here and push that wire up this way some while pulling this to get that out of there. But the major trick is if you can get to what's holding that, you ain't gotta worry about all that fun stuff. Right there's the wire. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're right there. You're right there. Oh, if I get... Come on. There she goes. There she goes. There we are. And just rotate that downward, getting it out of the way. Okay, so this one kind of caught me a little bit off guard, because I was expecting once I got that thing off, I was expecting there'd be a screw right there because most of the time there's a screw inside there that holds the cylinder in place and prevents it from uh, walking out. What this one has is a tab up inside here between where you see the screw set right here and this little slot area right here. Let me see how much good this does to zoom in on it. You can't see the actual tab up inside there. But what you got to do is get you a flat screwdriver. A small one because it's got to fit kind of loosely up between this. You'll get inside there, you'll press in on that tab, and I'll show you the tab here in a moment when I pull the cylinder out. You got to press in on that tab and hold that tab in while getting, oh, where'd my screwdriver go? Another flat screwdriver, getting in behind this is just kind of pried outward. It's kind of hard to do that when I'm all zoomed in. Go the other way. Okay. Try this again. So you take the screwdriver, stick it up inside there to push that tab in, which I'll show you here in a moment, what the tab looks like. Then you'll get this, get in behind here, tilt and wedge, it'll walk that cylinder right out of there. Once you get that cylinder broken loose, or released up inside here, 
you should be able to get it and just kind of walk it right out. Right there is that tab. You're taking that flat screwdriver, squeezing up in that groove, and you gotta push that tab inward all the way in. See how spring loaded? You simply take the blade of that screwdriver and push that in. Wedge it from back here, and yours may actually be, see that uh, wings or whatever you wanna call it contraption is gone off mine. It has been for like a long time. Where's my new one I'll show you? You can get your screwdriver back in behind that collar right there while pushing in that tab and pop it right out and slide her out. Now let's slide this one back in. You got a groove right here. Groove right there. Align the grooves. And gently work with it. Now one thing you may have to do Okay, let me pull this back out. Look, right there. See that? Get up beside here. Uh, let me zoom in so if I can catch it. Let me advise for you guys, if you ever get into videography and stuff like that, use Sony cameras. This is a Canon and I am not happy with it. Anyway, due to lack of light, can't see it, but there is the piece up inside there that fits into that key piece. Uh, here. So you gotta make sure those line up, otherwise this will not snap in. But you see what the whole gist of it is. This slot has to line up with that groove. This tongue right here has to line up with that groove. That slides in, and so now, I'm going to put the camera down, work with this for a moment to get it to pop in. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I've got my cylinder lock put in place now. It's time to put this baby back together again. So, for assemblies is reverse of disassembly. You put this back in place, put the three screws in, so on, so on, so on. Uh, when I get to that spot to where I show you where that groove is over here, I'll jump in and show you real quick. Well, I'm trying to show you where that groove is at. It's right there on the end of my finger, but I'm not getting enough light inside there to for it to show up. Let me try some. Right there. See that little groove right there? You see the white of the switch, but then you see that groove right down below it. That's the groove that... This ball right here needs to fit down inside that groove. And technically I really should clean all this stuff out, but I gotta go to work here in just a minute. So now you take this ball, slide down inside that groove, and set it inside right here, put the screw in, and you're good to go on that. Now you slide this piece right here back in place, fit it over that spring, and pay attention right here. On your column, you got T, 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 those slots, stuff like that. You got a wide spot right here. This does not matter. But this does. It's right there. I'll find a good spot to show you. If you look real close, you got teeth coming around here, but you got that wide gap right here that goes over where that gap is on the shaft right there. So be sure to line that up, otherwise it's not gonna go very easily. Oh, I also forgot to mention too that you can grab hold of the shaft, the steering shaft, pull outward towards you, and you pull it up. It makes it a lot easier too. Forgot to mention that part. There you go. Put your snap ring in place before you put your tool in place. Put that up there and crank her down to snap her in. When you go put your steering wheel back on, pay attention. Remember, that comes up through your steering wheel right there. Don't want you to break it. Then you tighten these three screws up and check this out. I don't know what I did different, but my horn used to not work. Yay! I'll try to put my center cap thing back in and it won't go. You know why? That tab right there locks in that groove right there, which means that this has a certain way it has to be clocked, and I wasn't paying attention, so yeah, I gotta take that back off and reclock it to where that square tab is sitting like this. This piece right here goes straight up here in the middle, like right here. This gap needs to go up here. So this screw hole needs to be moved up here. 
but I seriously need to get in and get a shower real quick and get to work. So guess what? I'll do that at a later date. But I'm just telling you, pay attention. Steering wheel, see my alignment here. This goes up here. So I'll take care of that later because I got to get to work. But here's the important part. Yay! That's the important part, it works. When you get down inside the steering column, you're gonna have one, two, two, little, little, little. When you get down inside the steering column to remove the lock cylinder, you're gonna have one of two ways of removing it. One, you're gonna have a screw where I showed you guys earlier, where I said it kind of caught me off guard because it's what I was expecting. Or two, you're gonna have that little tab that's like that. I showed you guys how to trip with the screwdriver, stick it outside and push that tab in, wedge that cylinder out, then you pull it on out of the column. Not a big deal. It's just now you know what to expect, okay? Now as far as those tools we used, you can pick most of those up at your local auto parts store and at Loan and Tool Program. Get them for free. You go in, you put a deposit down for X amount of dollars. I can't quote how much they are. But you put that little deposit down on them and whenever you bring it back, you get your money back. So you, essentially you're free. Uh... The pushing in that little spring plate to get that snap ring out, yes, I realize that you can't do that by yourself because I've done it. There's many people out there that's told me, well, I mentioned by getting the tool to show on the video on how to do that. I caught some slack from it. Why are you going to use that tool? You don't need that tool. You know better than that. Well, yeah, I do know better than that. I know how to do it. But like I said earlier in the video, I know people who have, I'm not going to go as far as saying handicaps, but they have dexterity issues where their hands don't work as well from arthritis or I know one good buddy of mine has got a uh, blown out rotator cuff it's hard for him to pick up his arm so using tools to make your life easier easier isn't such a bad thing now uh, my local O'Reilly's didn't have that particular tool for a loaner tool they had it over in the uh, tools area on their aisles and stuff it was like 15 bucks so if you really need that type of tool for whatever reasons, you know, your hands are messed up or whatever the case may be, or even some of the ladies out there, some of the ladies don't have the strength to hold that plate down and pry that ring out at the same time. 15 bucks is a good investment. Even if it is done one time, it can save you a lot of headache, a lot of fussing and stuff like that later on. So don't be afraid to use the tool if you want to use it. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave school comments down below, and I really appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.